So after it passes quality assurance, comes into Warren's workroom. Development, space. listening, quality yeah. assurance. So here, Warren, well, Warren, you can explain it better than I can, what you do. This is Warren Gill. He is in charge of Sonic Development. Sonic Development. Sonic Development and new product quality control to make sure everything that leaves here is as good as the next product. After it's measured, you listen to it. Listen to it, check the functionality, make sure it falls within a very narrow window right. of sonic performance. If it doesn't sound like I want to take it home, it doesn't leave the plant. All right. We have a uh, reference 150 SE we use as our baseline amp in here for everyday use, where we test uh, reference preamps and phono stages and all the other products. And then over further here, we have a reference 6 as our preamplifier. We use as the, the baseline in the room as our reference. And we have a CD6 CD player and a vintage VPI yeah. turntable. TNT. TNT. This is, a, this is the, I owned one of these just like this, and it's it's got the three pulleys. It's a very sweet sounding table. Yep. Very dynamic. A good the flywheel. It doesn't the, have that thin, hard, hard acrylic tonal balance. It has a very natural, even tonal balance. Yes. Yeah. And we have a Grado statement cartridge on there. Okay. Which is about 0.5 millivolt output. And what vintage is that cartridge? Oh, that's running on probably six years old. It runs perfectly. Yeah. Never had a hiccup or a flaw. Very sweet and never vomited. Nothing. No. 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 Uh, super great in the mid range. Yeah. That's where it's super great. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. That's it's. It's, it's effortless on vocals. Suit. And currently we have the Magnapan 20.7s in here as our everyday listening speaker, a very high resolution, fast, dynamic, great depth in the room, and an assortment of RPG diffusers. Yep. Both, uh, I have them myself. Yep, they work good. They make the room disappear more of the boundaries of the room. That's the idea. And various uh, ASC tube traps as well. And some vintage magnaplaner timpanies over in yeah. this corner. I see. Oh. For low for low resonance absorption. Right. They occasionally hold court in the in the speaker position and we play them. Okay. And a, like and a vintage AM2 radio. radio. I noticed yeah. that. Probably the best sounding electronics in the in the place. But I'm you know. <laughs> hey no. So here David will take take the finalized product and he'll put the skin on. So whatever colors uh, the customers ordered for Hi. for the front panel, the side panel. Because they, they have a choice of, they have a choice of uh, uh, silver or black. Is exactly. That, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. Looks a lot better with the, with the, with everything on yeah. it. <laughs> Our customers think so too. And where are all these are these panels all made locally? Not all of them. Some of them are are outsourced, um, but some are made locally. Yeah, most we try to make as much metal work locally. Whoever has the best expertise, we go to. Mm -hmm. Right, and and yeah. so these these uh, some processes. I mean, for example, like these knobs. They look. Pl they're not plastic. No, this is actually machined aluminum. It looks anyway, like plastic. we've been accused that they're plastic. Right. People are like, right. oh, those Oops. cheap plastic knobs. Right. Like, well, if you if you feel them, they're actually you know you can feel they're cold. You know that they have yeah. some weight yep. to them. Oh yeah. But they're they're made so nicely that <laughs> people think they're you plastic. get yeah you you pay a penalty for making something nicely. But this is a good example. I mean, this is this is a process that's not even doable in the U.S. This is a dual anodized process where it's black and, and, and where is that done so this is done in Asia well, um, can't do it here because the they, skill set or the machining or the we don't we can't EPA. find a supplier that does that does well. dual color and so, so like now that. when so the, when when the design team at Sonus mm -hmm. came up with this kind of look right you then have to go and and execute it it's right you know it's like they, they say to you here's what we came up with no they they're very uh, adept at sourcing uh, vendors to work with. Mm -hmm. Oh really? So it's not, they don't just say, here's a nice looking thing, you take it this and they make They have uh, accumulated knowledge in developing, you know, Sonus Faber products, right. uh, the products they design, and so they have a, a list of key vendors they work with and tend to work with that have been shown to them. Yeah, I mean, because we get some parts, results. for example, oh, some, that's great. some parts come from Italy, you know, the, some of the little metal parts. So Those are the ones that taste good. The right. badges, some of the badges do. Yeah, I see. That's interesting. You know, again, you, we, we you try think to... it was just a matter of, well, here's a nice looking thing that you figure it out. Right. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, it's a combination of things. It's, it's, uh, it's sourcing the appropriate skill set, like I say, with this knob, um, sourcing 
the ability to finish it like we want um, and also maintain a, a cost structure. You know, the thing about, obviously the thing about metal work is, is it doesn't directly affect the sound quality, right? So, you know, we could theoretically spend $1,000 just on, you know, these these panels or what have you for the chassis yeah. to real no sonic benefit. So, so it becomes this balancing act. But you know? people who spend the kind of money that these things cost want something that has a certain aesthetic. Right. Well, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and we're trying to give it a, a, a newer aesthetic, you know, right. keeping in mind the, the old look of audio. I like the look. And in the case yeah. of the side panels where the transformers are bolted directly, there is a sonic benefit. It adds, it acts as a so massive kinetic energy sink. So you don't get a, you don't get a buzz. No. Yeah. It deadens the vibrations. Yeah. Plus it looks good. Yeah, it does look looks great. And you don't see any any screws because it's it's screwed in from behind. How do you how does that work? They're hidden. Oh, see the tabs screws. in yeah. from behind. Uh, I, see. I like the color of those caps. They're so beautiful. Those are proprietary. It's a shame that they have to be hidden. So, and you'll notice too. So those. Well, the cover is a, the standard color is a clear acrylic cover, so they really aren't hidden. So this is the phono stage actually, right? right. So oh. and you'll notice that the that the gold caps in there. Are different than the gold caps in the Rep Six, so yeah. And you'll find, you know, if you look at another product, the caps are different yet again. So, yeah. you know, we do a lot of proprietary parts that are actually not just specific to audio research, but specific to a given product, right? Um, you know, which is and we work with the vendors to develop the product, the Sonics, yeah. with them. And, so it's and you're heavily part. involved in that too. I am, so you've seen I am the, the one that's involved, yeah, in the He's design the of the capacitors, it, yeah. of voicing them with yeah, the so vendor. So that must be a, a particularly onerous task to sitting and listening to capacitors. Well, it can't be fun. Sometimes they're a joy, and sometimes they're a pain. Yeah, yeah. but they eventually end up being a joy. Yes, that's where yeah. they have to end up. Yeah, I, I visited one place where the guy just. It was a very simple amplifier, and he just changed one capacitor. And it was like, get out of here! Right. And sometimes we have several vendors vying for the same part sure, sure. for our business, and yep. we see who comes up with the best parts. Yep. Okay. What's next? Yeah. So basically, after this this process, you know, and those are all panels up there. Yeah, so right. Those yeah. are all just different panels. Yeah. Yep. All in spiral, spiral sleeve. After that, then uh, basically so, just moves on to, to shipping, gets boxed up and sent out. So these are amplifiers ready to ready to go. Yeah. Right. These are 150s. It's the GS150. Yeah. You see, I'm getting familiarity with. It. And this ugly, this ugly rubber surround is put on here just for protection purposes. Sure. So, it's it shipped yeah. that way or no? No, no, no. it doesn't. No. It's just for here. It's so just for here. Really is it box? Yeah. As it moves through the factory, so they don't yeah. get nicked. So yeah, so we keep a small back stock uh, of product. But um, that's unboxed as well. Yeah, it's unboxed. Box. So that it can can near a rough two fifties without. Have you ever done a on. personality profile of your customers to see which ones buy the black face plates and which <laughs> ones buy the silver ones? Is there a particular No, but you know, regionally it, i would say regionally it, it uh, Yeah, how does that work? Austria and Germany for the most part order black uh, front panels. No, Germany's silver. I see German orders that are black, but really? Austrian orders almost. I would see, uh, yeah, almost always black. Let's not fight over this. No, and then, and then Poland is also uh, majority black panels. Um, yeah, but then like Scandinavia is, is all all natural colored, so all the silver panels. Now, what is that amplifier right there? That's the 750 monoblock. Mm -hmm. so that's our biggest amplifier. Yeah, that is big. Yeah, yeah. There are only two people in the factory that are permitted to build those. Well. Wow. And we actually so. <laughs> so what are those sell for? There's sixty thousand a pair. Sixty thousand a pair. Yeah. And we actually built those on uh, on these engine bolts. Wow. So the amplifier gets bolted. The bottom of it gets bolted to this because um, because it's three layers. It really helps if they're able to kind of twist and turn sure. the amplifiers oh, yeah. as they're putting it together. Um, so yeah, this is actually, they, they, they moved their way through that whole process, bolted to one of these carts as opposed to the, the standard. And this is where the transformers get... Right, so we take the transformers in here, we clean them up a little bit as we spray paint them, and, and you know, just get them, try to, you know... <laughs> they're, not, they're not beautiful. Even even here, but they're a lot better looking than yeah. That looks than, like than it, that looks like it was it was uh, ship salvage. Yeah, exactly. You know, from underwater. They're, they're just not a. These were taken from the Titanic. 
And I know they don't look good, but uh, they don't make these anymore. And the Titanic had a lot of them, so we used them. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's another item too. That's you know typically proprietary per product. Yep. Um, you know, so there's not a lot of a lot of sharing transformers. So that we you know we stock a lot of different transformers because each product has its own specific requirements. Yep. Now what's this? This is a. That's the chassis. The why is this chassis here? I don't know why it's here. It's probably going to get some transformers. Oh, this I see. Is, yeah, this is the bottom part of the GS150 amplifier. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It, it is. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's a very expensive chassis because you can see, like here, this is all hand soldered and or say hand welded and then it's hand, hand uh, sanded and finished. Oh, yeah, right. So there's loads of hand oh, yeah, work. The, yeah, there's no... There's no like mm -hmm. the folds don't show because it's yeah. yeah and you can see you know it's not it's not perfect I mean you can tell it's done by hand yeah you know and then uh, and then this all the uh, laser etching yeah um, is base it's not obviously it's not let, uh, etched by hand but uh, right but it's uh, it's also a time consuming process what brand are these do you know are these um, made for you Warren can answer that question because yeah. again that's something that's a that's a process that he will go through when. Listening to, uh, he listens to I know, binding to posts. Binding posts, yeah. I know. That I've heard, yeah. not difficult to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then basically after, you know, after David Pan. What's, what's up, in here? I'm going to take you there in just a second. Oh, sorry. So no, 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 that's okay. I was just going to say, basically it goes from here and then it goes down there into shipping where you see all the boxes. Right. And uh, it gets boxed and sent out of the... And, and what's happening here? So this is service. Oh, service. Yeah, this is the service department. So we service anything we've ever built. Um, Chris, this is Chris. Our remember lead Michael. Hi, Chris. Yeah. How are hey, you? Nice to see you again. Nice I haven't seen you in a number of years. A long time. Yeah, yeah. Very long time. Love your column. Thank you. Keep the vinyl spinning, man. You bet. You bet. Vinyl number one. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> So awesome. You can see a bunch of sample boards up there, like we saw up front. Right. Um, so these guys will use those to reference uh, whatever they're whatever they're working on. But you know, audio research prize itself in that we can fix, with, with the exception of a very few selection of products, we can fix anything we've ever built wow. in the past 46 years. And how years. far back do the products? 46 years. Go. You get stuff from the early, early. We actually get stuff that's even older than audio research. So that original electronic industries. Wow. Chris will get that in, and he can he can still work on that too. Wow. Um, you know, things like CD players, there are a couple of CD players we can't get the transports yeah. anymore. And then what happens? They, they're out of luck. They're just, yeah. They're that just, happens all over the industry, happens. I know. It's, yeah, it's an, an unfortunate side That's effect. That's the great part about turntables. Uh, the other thing we do here is we break in all of our power tubes, or burn in all of our power tubes. Unfortunately, we don't have any tubes stuffed in here right now, but these are all custom machines that we built. Um, so just, to, just to burn in tubes, we have the power tubes. And what we'll do is we'll stuff the uh, stuff the machines, and then we'll run the tubes for two days. Uh, their electrical characteristics aren't stable until until after about two days worth of, of use. Wow! So the burn-in process allows us to stabilize the tubes' characteristics, and then we measure the tubes. So you'll always notice on audio research power tubes that there are two numbers uh, written on here, and these are two characteristics, uh, two electrical characteristics that our guys measure. And, and use for sorting. And the idea here is that you, you know to match, match the two. Well you want to match set, right. Yeah. But also too from a just from a serviceability longevity standpoint, um, if all the tubes have similar char similar characteristics and they're not, you know, one tube isn't working harder than the rest. And uh, sure that'll make sense. Yeah. And also too, I mean they, they do have different sonic characteristics yep. and Warren will choose which tubes go into which products. You know, for wow. example, like these tubes might sound better in one amplifier, whereas these tubes will sound better in another. And he'll make those determinations. Wow, that's um, a lot of work. It is a lot of work. <laughs> I thought you sort of sits around and listens to music all day and that's the end of the job. I was gonna say, that's a job. I, well, that is my job. <laughs> what am I talking about? So, and you can see, I mean, we already buy these tubes pre-sorted. So we, we spend extra money with the manufacturer, and then after we get them, we have to, we you sort even further. Again. Yeah. So. Can't pay. Okay, this is one of the. That's the big sound room, yeah. So let's, can we, can we get a light on it? Do sure, we, sure. Do they have lights in here? We do. We try to keep them a little more subtle, because fluorescents are so horrible. But okay. That was this a is one of, the, one of the listening rooms, and yeah. let's see, let's see what's in here right now. So we have. This is Alan Perkins' uh, RPM, RPM turntable. You'll notice the looks. This was designed in the 1990s, and everybody copied this. 
Right. I'm not going to mention the brands that copied it, Fiker, Clear Audio, but that was his look in the 1990s, and it's still a wonderful turntable. And a current triplanar arm. Right, current triplanar arm, which is another, another Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota product. You have a Lyra Scala, Scala in there. Lyra Scala the cartridge. cartridge. And then you have a Ref 6 here. Is that Ref right? 6 preamp and a Ref 103 phono stage on the right. Yep, that's the phono. That's the Ref 6. And that's the CD9 CD player above that. Above that, okay. Is that currently in production? Yep. Shows you what I know. I don't know. Okay, and then uh, these are the Aidas. Yeah. These are the Aida, yeah. Sonus Faber. Aidas, and you're using those those cable those cable lifters, which people mock mock audio files for using because they can't possibly make a difference. But right, they do. but they do. Yeah, they do. And they make a difference because static electricity gets accumulated in the cables when you know, just, just the proximity to the floor and the, the field interaction from the cable with the materials and the carpeting. Okay, people will scream about that, but we don't care if they scream, right? It don't the matter. System is good enough. It, it's they can scream audible. Yeah. Okay, so this is a good place to come and listen to music, which I hope yeah. we'll do a little bit later. Can you do that today? Yeah. And the yeah. GS150 power in that stereo. Right. right, that's the one I heard at uh, at the Expona show. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was that room was spectacular. I still had get ting tingly thinking about the sound in that room. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I'm here, because if the sound in that room sucked, I would I would say so. We I would expect that's just you the to. Person that I am. That way, when something when I say something sounds really sound really great, it, it means it something. Us. It means something. So there's a preamp that's getting built. It's actually the Ref Six preamplifier. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is is they'll get the order in, and she'll grab a chassis, and then go over there to the board. The board so you board. don't keep invent you don't keep inventory per se. We do keep some. Some, mm -hmm. but yeah. for the most part, if someone orders something, mm -hmm. then you build to order. We, so we, we keep unfinished or un incomplete chassis, typically. So like, you know, this doesn't have any metal work on it. Right. So we'll build it up, you know, and finish it to this point, get it through all the testing, um, and then keep it unfinished. And then when order comes in, then we just put the panels on it. Because otherwise, you know, it's, it's usually a, a you know, three to five day process yeah. to build something. Well, and that's it's like a whole week to build a piece. That's essentially right. Well, you know, again, just what we went through over there. You know, you consider the whole board process. Oh yeah, at least, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, that's a day, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you know, this is pretty quick. This assembly process here, but then it goes to the quality assurance guys, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, you know, and then after that, it goes to the listening test and etc. Et Since we're here at service, we bring you over to another space. Well. This, is, this room is an accountant's nightmare um, because these are all parts for products we don't make anymore. Wow. So we keep a stock of parts, everything you can see from transformers and circuit boards, the front panels, chassis parts, um, Wow. you know, and the individual components so that when we do get a 30 year old piece of equipment in here, We've got the, the things to fix it. These are th things that people do not consider. No. You know? no and that, well, that's D120, that's, now that's old. And that's why I say this is an accountant's nightmare. Sure. This, this room mostly just sits here. Look at this. All this inventory, which they hate. You know, they hate stagnant inventory. But Yeah, but, but that's... It's, but it's, you know, it's for our customers. So now, what are you working on here? This this one, this is a... Uh... Well, this is a REF 250 SE. We actually have a two-step final quality control. Basically, um, the QA so this department... Is new. This is new. This is a brand this new product new. going out to a customer. Um, the QA department does their full checkout. Warren listens to it. They panel it. And then, basically, I check everything again and do a full second... QA checkout to make sure that nothing was missed. It's just a two-step process that we've instituted to try to uh, give the customer the very best possible product. We right. Can. Okay. So that's inventory there for all the current products. Current product. So yeah, current circuit, product inventory. Current circuitry. Okay. All the metal work and, and like I said, back here is mainly just storage and shipping. And we source everything as locally as possible. That makes um, sense. I mean, well, it's. I think it's part of you know what people are buying with our brand. You know, they're. They're not buying a $50 widget. Right. You know, this, is, this is an investment. 
uh, hopefully a long-term investment. And you tell people yeah. to keep their boxes. Yes, we do. Save their, I save every box. Yeah. And these people just don't appreciate what it takes to to do all of this. Right. It just seems like it's a finished product. There it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Are these all empty too? These are all empty. These, well, no, these actually, these are actually finished product, um, but they're not sealed up so that if, uh, so, if, so what we do is we keep a minimal stock of paneled finished product at certain voltages. But right. for example, you know, if we have a 230 available and an order comes in for a 120, we can just pull it out of right. the box. Ref phono, the ref phono, ref phono. Yeah. Very optimistic about selling phono preamps. Is it ref six? Yeah. We sell a lot of phono preamplifiers. I'm we sure. We really do. It's happening, baby. It is. Okay, why don't you tell everybody who you are? Hi, I'm Livio Kukuza. I'm the director of uh, design for the WOM group. <laughs> the whole WOM group, okay. Yeah. Well, we have WOM feelings towards you then, so let's let's go in there and see what... Oh, this is, yeah, so it's... Where is it? Yeah, you gotta go through Warren's. Oh, we have to go through Warren first, right? Sorry, Warren, we're going to the archive. Good. I used to think your love you was something Where do we go? Here, right here. Oh, that's what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I was just moving the cart. I, this was the first place that I visited when, uh, when, I, uh, when I arrived in, here in uh, audio research two years ago. And uh, for me it was uh, like, like uh, a dream come true because I, I was always a big fan of audio research. Uh, my father has a shop when I was a child and so I grew up surrounded by audio research gears and um, of course when uh, when we started to uh, work together on the new products I took inspiration from some of these beauties um, the first product that I really uh, used uh, to create the inspiration behind the new product was the, uh, the SP1 uh, in fact you can see that some of the elements of this this product are uh, reinterpreted in the in the new line of uh, yeah, of yeah the, knobs, the knobs particularly. yeah the knobs in particular the black window that now we are using for the display right and uh, the tube canyon was used in the was introduced in the in the GS uh, I love that expression the tube canyon yeah, yeah it's very colorful yeah. Uh, it's, you could call it Tube Valley, <laughs> like Death Valley. You get stuck in Tube Valley, you never come out. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that uh, everything starts here from audio research, and everything restarted here for the new G, uh, GS line, and now uh, for the new reference line. So this was the the main inspiration for the preamplifiers. Uh, the other inspiration. Uh, came from uh, the, uh, the, the the really famous the really famous uh, D79. Yep. So we used the the three the, meters, the three meters yeah. as uh, as audio research uh, done in the past. You just integrated the meters a little more cleanly into the look. And yes. Yes. We colors. tried to to create a, a match between this philosophy and a more modern and uh, clean design. Right. Uh, another thing that I really loved uh, from uh, the past of audio research was the use of uh, flat chassis mm -hmm. um, that exposed the tubes but also uh, say to the customer uh, a lot of details about the technology used inside so um, I love this way to, to put all the, 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 um, the technical uh, parts exposed to the amplifier because it's something that tells uh, what this there is inside the, the test points and yeah. all the other, yeah okay yeah uh, so our 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 uh, mission was to recreate this sort of uh, of uh, technical style that uh, was you're not going to bring back the Dymo label tape though are you <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a little bit too much, but <laughs> yeah, because that has its own aesthetic. There are, there are dy dymo label maker connoisseurs that would probably 
like but, seeing them. But, but we, we have not listened to them. We used a lot of uh, labels uh, of the past on the top of the unit, all the warnings, uh, all the all all the, the the graphics that they used in the past. Right. Uh, now are not so functional because we don't have to to put all the labels on the units. But I like I really like to 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 use some of that because. Uh, so people don't kill themselves. Yeah, it's always a good thing. <laughs> well, it also reminds to the to the past to pull yep. the story yep. of the. Of the yeah, gold. How often do you? That's that's. I've never seen anything. No, that was a special edition we did for Taiwan. It talks about the Asian market. Yeah, yeah, they love that. They love that gold. But you also notice like the hole pattern in the in the top yeah. panel of that yeah. chassis. The little round holes is something else that Nibio Nibio took as inspiration. Yeah. Products. Okay. You, you copied it. That's, that's Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, this is the design. <laughs> right. We put element. We, we bring element from uh, right. from other right. from other products, and we put together. Wow. I mean, you'll see some other things in here too. I mean, uh, for example, I can't really see it well, but that up there is that a studio board. That's a studio board. It's custom made by Bill. Here's another one back here. Yeah, I noticed that. On top one, of yeah. that one. Um, and, and you'll notice that that one's also branded electronic industries yeah. as opposed yeah. to audio research. So, you know, a number of these 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 little guys. That for a radio station, I assume. Exactly. You know, here this is an old electronic industries product, um, and even you know I think you got up in that top left corner over there, um, the S up here. So that's actually those are the same products, but that's right after Bill started audio research. He was actually dual branding uh, both see, electronic oh, yeah, yeah, industries yeah, 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 and yeah, audio yeah, research yeah, components yeah. Uh, for for at least a year or two, I believe, huh. until he stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. And there he is. For those who don't know, and there's Bill. the gentleman. There's Bill. There he is. Hi, Bill. But here too, you look at these old amplifiers. You know, we were. We were looking at the chassis of the of the GSI 150. Yes. You know, this is you know this is the inspiration. But we were talking about those hand welded. It's the same. Yeah. It's the, the same, same approach, yeah, right? Yeah, and so that's approach. kind of the the look that we were going for. You know, trying to trying to recreate that. Aesthetic. There are some people that still swear by these things. You know, I swear to God, they do. They well. Mr. Vanderseen still does. He yeah. puts on, on a lot of his speakers. Yeah, they, they just the terminal love those strips. Things. Yeah, they're just not very user friendly. No, they, you know, if they, you're li they limit to what you can use. That's right. that's the problem. People if, get very annoyed when they buy a very expensive speaker cable and then they can't use it. They can't it. use it. Yeah, exactly. And that was good back in the day when we were all using lamp cord. Right. But so, uh, <laughs> I just heard a great story from a, from a a guy. He he had a customer who came in to, to buy something. Mm -hmm. And he insisted on it. He's using a lamp cord. The guy says, but I can tell you, all cable sounds the same. It can't, I'm an electrical engineer. It can't possibly make a difference. The guy would not even take the test. He wouldn't even listen. He right. Don't listen. But no, I had that experience many times in retail, especially engineers. They, they, if it, you know, if it measures right. That's all. the same, then it's yeah. going to sound the same. This, this is what we call the transistor room. And this is how you make a 50 cent a 50 cent part, a five dollar part. So, you know, a manufacturer will build something to a, you know, plus or minus three percent tolerance, which is, which is well beyond what we find acceptable. Right. But there's no, there's no recourse to get a tighter tolerance from the manufacturer. Right. So you're going to do it yourself. So we buy them and then we sort them and we'll get, you know, let's say 20 different variations within that assortment and we'll only accept seven of them. And then, uh, and then what we do is we use these little Little. Oh, I thought this is where you. This is where you make the, the audio research tie dye shirts. No, that's, it's that's the puffy shirts. Else. It's the puffy shirts. Oh, and that's someplace yeah. else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But what they do is then they then they mark the the transistors. You can see them. Oh, this one here. They've got little blue and blue, white stripes yeah. on them. Uh, interesting. And yeah. um, so for the same same reason, we match tubes. Tube, yeah, we sure. match the of course. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, you look inside a reference phono three, for example. You know. You see this little wacky 
a lot of people they want to they want to correct this kind of crooked piece of metal. But that's but on purpose. That's actually there on purpose at that angle because it's a it's a shield. And Warren determined that that's how it needed to be and where it needed to be. Uh, he does a lot with damping materials too. So you can see, for example, there's this piece of damping material in the back panel. Yeah. You know, and we use actually three different types of damping materials. Right. And I'll take you into engineering, but uh, you got to turn your camera off. Oh, okay. Like right now. Well, as soon as we walk in the store, yeah. This door right here? This door right here. Okay, I'm turning the camera off because we're not allowed. Well, I'm allowed and I can't show you what's in here.